Man, am I pissed off. And I want to get a few things off my chest here, like some facts. Enough of this PC stuff, enough of this spinning for the Biden administration. Massive intelligence failure all day long. Massive intelligence failure. Israel's under attack. They have people in the streets being slaughtered, people in their homes being slaughtered. Have you seen this video of them kidnapping people and just whacking them around like they're not even human beings, killing people left and right? And then they call them Gaza militants or Palestinian militants. These are Nazis. This is what the Nazis do. This is what the Nazis are all about. This is what their children are being taught, whether it's the Palestinian Authority or Hamas or Iran. The same thing as the Nazis taught their kids. Jews are dogs. Jews are non-humans. And this goes on and on and on. Accountability here is necessary. Accountability. First of all, an intelligence failure. I don't know. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, did the media go on and on and on about intelligence failure? When the Tet Offensive occurred in in Vietnam, did the media go on and on and on about an intelligence failure? When 9-11 occurred, did the media go on and on about an intelligence failure? What is this? They could discuss an intelligence failure later. It's a country fighting for its survival. People who are being slaughtered. You got Hezbollah waiting in the wings. You got Iran trying to get nukes. The hell's wrong with our media? And an intelligence failure? Well, something didn't go right. But right now, these people need to fight for their lives. That's number one. Number two, stop calling them militia. Stop calling them terrorists. They are Nazis. It's an amazing thing. Our media doesn't have any problem calling Trump a Nazi and a supporter of Nazis or neo-Nazis or whatever the hell it is. But real Nazis who are slaughtering people because they're Jewish, using similar tactics. Reminds me of Kristallnacht, what I've seen today. No, 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 no. Those are Gaza Strip militia. The media in this country is so bad, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and it really is appalling. Six billion dollars. You hear this debate all day? Well, it's not really six billion. It's not in their account. It may have to go to this account. Then it's got to work through the wire system. And they may not have it. Excuse me. We allowed $6 billion to go to Iran two weeks ago. Who cares what account it's in? Or if they have access to it this minute? Why the hell are we agreeing that Iran should have $6 billion, period? They threatened to blow us off the face of the earth. They threatened to blow Israel off the face of the earth. They're behind this entire damn thing right now that's going on in Israel. Why would we even think about giving them $6 billion to buy flowers if they want to do it? Let me ask you a question. Would Franklin Roosevelt have given an enemy of this country that threatened to blow us off the face of the earth six billion dollars for any reason? How about Harry Truman? How about Dwight Eisenhower? How about John Kennedy? How about Richard Nixon? How about Ronald Reagan? How about the Bushes? Donald Trump didn't give them six billion dollars and he never would have given them six billion dollars. So let's stop playing games with the propaganda from the Biden administration. Oh, it's not being used for that. And I'm going to tell you, they're right, in a way. We didn't give Iran $6 billion. We gave them tens and tens of billions of dollars. The Biden administration gave them tens and tens of billions of dollars, perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars. I'll get to that in a minute. Here's a press release. Our Department of Justice is very proud of itself. They get this this Revolutionary Guard Corps, Islamic Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps guy who's plotting to murder Bolton and Pompeo. It was last year, press release from the Department of Justice. Wow, that's not nice. That's not. So why did we give them six billion dollars when they're threatening to assassinate Pompeo and Bolton? For God's sakes, really? Well, there needs to be accountability here. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, this happens every time when Israel seeks to defend itself against these Nazi marauders who attack them. Give it two days, three days, five days, we'll have Thomas Friedman, a reprobate, 
We'll have the New York Times, which covered up the Holocaust, joined by the Washington Post, joined by the big three networks, born, joined by CNN and MSNBC and all the rest of the clowns. Oh, wow. Israel's really overreacting. Then you'll get the numbers, like COVID. Right on the TV screen, it'll say, how many people have died in the Gaza Strip as a result of the, the Israelis, mind you. You know, Harry Truman dropped two nuclear bombs. I'm not proposing that. Don't get confused, media matters and media. Don't get confused. But I don't remember our media saying, well, you know how many people died from that and died from that? It ended the war. And in many ways, he was a hero. That was a tough call. But it was out of a million troops, American troops, dead. So here we have our media giving aid and comfort to the enemy. It's coming. Wow, how many women and children have died in Gaza? How many, how many casualties are there? So the Israelis, the Jews in Israel, we're going to rally around them as a government and as a people as long as they're victims. But if they use their own might, their own capabilities to defeat these Nazi bastards, Hamas, well then, they're the aggressor. We can't have that. No, no, no. The people in Israel should live like, did you see the videos of the girls being grabbed and kidnapped out of their cars, grabbing them by the hair? Did you see the little boys getting slapped around? Can you imagine what's happening to these people tonight in the Gaza Strip? Can you imagine the horror that's taking place right now by these, these Hamas Nazis backed by the Iranian regime Nazis? It's unimaginable what's going to be taking place here. So there needs to be accountability. And by accountability, I want to point out a couple of things to you. I said I'm going to get some things off my chest, and I am. Trump killed Soleimani, the head Nazi, really, of the Iranian military. Trump was destroying the Iranian economy with brutal sanctions. The Iranians were rising up. They don't like that government. They don't like the Nazi government in Tehran. And they're now being mowed down, slaughtered, raped, imprisoned, God knows what, because of our current policies. Trump was Israel's greatest friend in the Oval Office ever. Can that be said of Obama or Biden? No. Biden reversed everything. Biden rebuilt the Iranian war machine. I'll prove it in a minute. I'm sure the reporters and others getting information from the Biden Pentagon and White House won't tell you this. No, no, no. I'll tell you this. Biden rebuilt the Palestinian war machine. They were all on their heels. That's why there wasn't a war when Donald Trump was president between the Nazi terrorists and the Iranian Nazi regime and the Israelis. And the Israelis today are paying with their lives. I told you, I'm not candy coating a damn thing around here. And I'm not going to. No. What do I mean that Biden rebuilt the Iranian war machine? Well, the $6 billion is in this account, and it'll be that account. And, okay, forget about the $6 billion. Although, the idea that a president of the United States would give $6 billion, or allowed to be given, to the Iranian regime that threatens the United States of America, that's unleashing holy Nazi-like hell on the Jewish people in Israel, and is threatening to get nukes, that's insane! In and of itself, Iran's illicit oil exports hit five-year high. Free Beacon, Adam Cradle. How is that possible? We have sanctions on the oil. How is that possible? Trump put sanctions in there. Well, Biden didn't exactly lift them, but he's not enforcing them. Listen to this. Iranian oil exports, a principal source of income for Tehran's cash-strapped regime, Increased by 35% from 2021 to 2022. Gee, who was president then? Indicating that the Biden administration is not enforcing sanctions meant to prevent these sales. Oh, there's more. Get ready. I bet you haven't heard this all day. Amid this uptick in Iranian aggression, the Biden administration has failed to enforce sanctions on Tehran's oil trade, which benefits China, Syria, Venezuela, Iranian oil sales stood at $44 billion as of August 2022, a 77% increase from Trump's last year in office, with analysis attributing the rise to President Biden's, quote, 
terminally lacks sanctions enforcement. Although the Biden administration has been armed with the intelligence information to seize at least six illicit Iranian oil ships in recent months, it has detained one ship in the past year, likely to appease Tehran amid diplomatic talks to restart the 2015 nuclear deal. Biden has also provided sanction waivers, permitting Iran access to $10 billion that was frozen in Iraq. Oh, but that $6 billion is in that account, in that account. Biden is funding Iran and rebuilt their damn military after Trump had it on its back. Let's be honest. Now, the fact is that sanctions relief to Iran is fungible. And Iran has been using these resources to go from, listen to this, America, this affects us, 2% enriched uranium and not installing advanced centrifuges under the Trump administration to racing towards nuclear weapons under Biden, becoming a nuclear threshold state enriching more than 60% enriched uranium. 2%? to 60 percent. Can you imagine if the Iranian Tehran Nazi regime had nuclear weapons today? Because that's what's coming. And then Biden has secret negotiations with the Iranians. Congress can't even get access to the information other than eight or so people. They keep saying, what are you negotiating? We need to know what's going on. And they keep pushing them away, pushing them away. I don't have to tell you anything, the administration tells Congress. Then they pick exactly the wrong guy, this guy named Malloy, to negotiate, who's sympathetic with the Iranians. And now, of course, he doesn't even have a classified, uh, uh, what do you call it, clearance. What's that all about? I'm just getting started. Biden reverses Trump policy on aid to Palestinians. Fox News fails to condemn recent terror wave against Israel. Our enemies see all this. They see appeasement. Am I not supposed to talk about Biden and appeasement? Was Churchill not supposed to talk about appeasement? Oh, Mark, you're being political. No, I'm telling you the truth. President Biden reaffirmed his commitment to a two-state solution. You know what a two-state solution is for Israel? It's the final solution. Look, that's just Gaza. You're going to have two states? What, are they going to have an air force? Are they going to have uh, missile silos? What, what, what's this second state going to look like? and announced plans to bolster U.S. financial aid to the Palestinian people, reversing multiple policies implemented by, you know, that horrible Donald Trump. During his comments, the president touched upon his administration's plans to implement a series of economic and confidence-building measures aimed at improving daily life for Palestinian people living in the West Bank, Gaza. But he stopped short of condemning Palestinian terrorism. Gee willikers. The president also said the U.S. would increase financial contributions to the controversial U.N. agency, UNRWA, that supports and advocates for Palestinian refugees, adding another $200 million to its budget to become the largest donor country. You see, the Palestinians want the refugees. They want their people poor because the head of the Palestinian regimes, whether it's the authority, whether it's Hamas, they ruin their people. You basically have mobster-type Nazi thugs running everything. All the money comes through them. They divide their economies up. They have relatives. They have consigliaries that run everything. But look at this one, Newsweek. Biden's Taylor Force betrayal. What's that all about? Joe Biden's recent gift of $235 million. Oh, he's pouring the money out. In aid to the Palestinians violates the spirit of the Taylor Force Act. It betrays the memory of Taylor Force himself. Who was he? He was a West Point graduate, U.S. Army veteran and graduate student at Vanderbilt University. He was 28 years old when he was murdered in Israel by a Palestinian terrorist named Bashar Maha on March 8, 2016. Maha wounded 10 others in his attack before being killed by the Israeli police. His family immediately attained celebrity status. Oh, under Abbas. That's the Palestinian Authority, the good ones, you know. Celebrity status. And you know what they awarded him? They awarded his parents a big pension. Much of it paid with our tax dollars. So Congress said that's enough. So did President Trump. Two years later, the Taylor Force Act was signed into law, ending all future aid to the Palestinian Authority unless and until the practice of rewarding terrorists and their families through the Martyrs Fund is ended. They didn't end it. So Trump put an end to it. And guess what? Joe Biden is ignoring the Taylor Force Act. And so 
The money continues to flow. The new funding was just one part of Biden's apparent plan to reverse all of Donald Trump's Palestinian-related policies. And then look at this. Just the other day, New York Times, Democrats tell Biden Saudi-Israel pact needs concessions for Palestinians. Here's Israel and the Saudi crown prince this close to a peace deal. And Biden interrupts and says, uh, not so fast. We need concessions to the Palestinians. Democrats, 20 Democrat senators signed a letter. No, 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 no. No deal until there's more concessions to the Palestinians. You know, folks, I'm about sick and tired of candy coating all this stuff. Let me cut to the chase. The Biden administration has helped arm up the Iranian regime, helped to arm up Hamas, which gets support from the Iranian regime, helped to arm up Hezbollah, which gets support from the Iranian regime and all the rest of it. And Joe Biden, in large measure, is responsible for it. And one and a half years to go with this administration, we can only pray to God that the Iranian regime doesn't have nuclear weapons until this man can be removed from office, God willing. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.